in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar on super service menus for Kia. Um, I'd just like to go over a few things with you before we begin today's webinar. My name is Laura and I just want to go through the audio options for today's webinar. You can either use your microphone and speakers on your PC or laptop or you can use a telephone to dial in and the number and the access code and an audio pin should be on your screens. Um, today's trainer is James Ashley and he will be obviously doing a presentation on super service menus. There will be a time for some questions at the end and we also really would like you to complete a quick survey at the end and when I say quick it really is quick. It's literally just a couple of questions but we do appreciate your feedback. Um, we will also be recording today's webinar so you can obviously refer back to it in the future if required. Um, just to go over a little bit of your panel so you know what you're doing, there is this little orange arrow that obviously allows you to see your options and hide them. You also have a raise hand icon so if at any point during the webinar you would like to, to speak to someone or you're having some problems please do use the raise hand icon. Um, also if you have a question there is a question box down the bottom, so please do type in your questions and one of our staff will answer you. So with all that done, today's agenda is we're just going to do an overview of the three-step process, um, entering your dealer and price settings, identifying a vehicle, selecting an operation, how to prepare and finalise a quote, and how to use the lifetime self service system and then we'll be going on to the super service menus resources. So with that all done I will pass you over to our presenter James and he can begin today's webinar. Great, thank you Laura and uh, welcome everyone. My name is James Ashley. I will be doing uh, the presenting today of super service menus. So please feel free to ask any questions if you're not sure um, about something you'd like me to re-explain it again um, please feel free to do that as Laura says if you're not um, if you don't want to be unmuted if you if you don't want to speak amongst the group um, and, and raise your hand then you can send in your your questions to us so we have someone here on hand answering questions Laura will be um, handling those and I'll uh, happily answer any of your questions if we're not sure about anything today we can't answer your questions can take them away and we can we can come back to you so please feel free to um, ask any question you, you want um, no, ma no matter how silly you think the question is uh, please feel free to, um, to, to to ask those so what we're going to do today is um, we're going to split the, the, the training up into different into different sections so the first part of today will be taking you through um, super service menus what is it and what can it do for your business the second part we're going to run you through more the vehicle selection, operating, um, the selection of detail and the information you can extract from this system. We'll also show you how um, fast, quick and accurate this system can be for your, for your dealership today. So by using the correct information, entering the correct pricing information into the system, it can really give you a, a, an accurate price for your service and quick and accurate and obviously a professional quote to, uh, to your customers. We'll also take you through uh, managing the quotes, how to find quotes, how to load quotes, how to edit quotes, how to print quotes, even how to email quotes, and even showing you buttons where you could actually export data and even place it into the DMS. We'll also show you some productivity tools as well, so upselling, um, giving a customer a lifetime service quote, giving them the cost of um, how much the service would be over a period of time that they're going to keep the car. So that means within a few clicks you'll actually be able to give the customer a price or a projected cost of how much uh, the vehicle would, uh, would be to keep it on the road in terms of servicing and repairs. And then lastly we'll be taking you through um, super service menus into um, some of the productivity features so um, customer management, job management, um, we'll also if we get time, try and show you some of the dealer dealer menu creation. We may not, we may not get time for that today, but um, we can always come back and do separate ses sessions with you um, if you want us to do that. 
and then also show you some of the resource features, so getting started, help settings, um, help files, um, contacting our customer support centre, um, watching our what we call our CN Learn videos, so our interactive um, movies, and also we've got things like a, a YouTube channel as well for Super Service, so you can always log on to our YouTube channel and you can find information um, that way. So let's just take you through um, the first uh, process, the, th the three-step process of using Super Service menus. So a common scenario today would be the customer comes in and they're requesting a, a price for a service. Let me show you how quick and accurate super service menus can be. So first thing we're going to do is identify the vehicle. Now we can identify it by the VIN or license plate number. In this scenario I'm just going to use a license plate number. Super service menus identifies the vehicle. We can see this is a Rio 5 door and it then correctly identifies the right repair menus and service intervals for my vehicle. By choosing the service let's say the customer is looking for a first year service on the car and it's a 15,000 kilometre service. Once we bring the service up onto the screen you can see here that I get my price. My price is always in the bottom right hand corner so very quickly I can say well look, the cost for this service will be 249 euros and 94p. So the idea is that here there is that within three steps and in a couple of clicks you get your price. Okay, so looking at the service, we can see full information about the, the job description, so we're going to carry out a service. We can see the price of how much the labour will be, so if we move along the screen, we can see the number of hours, um, the hourly price that we're going to charge the customer, and then if we scroll down the screen, we can see any parts and sundries that would be required in this job. There's also these plus and minus keys at the top of the screen here where I can minimise and maximise information. So if I want to look at parts or fluids and sundries, it's really easy. I can just click on those and that will give me the uh, individual costs and obviously all the final cost in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So that's the first part of, um, of getting started. It's really easy, really simple to find your pricing, whatever you want. If we want to then um, learn how Super Service Menus gets us the price, we would then set up the price settings in super service menus. Now this is a one time entry only, so once you've done it, you don't need to redo it again. So if you've got three or four workstations in your dealership that would all have access to super service menus, you only have to do it one time, you don't have to do it individually at each machine. So let me show you how we enter the settings into super service. We go into the settings along the top of the screen here, and we first of all start in user settings. Now what I'm going to do is run through each one of these. I won't go into lots of detail on each one, but the main one you really need to um, concentrate on is the price settings. We'll show you price settings in a minute. So once we come into um, user settings, you can see here that I can change my language, I can have my date format, time format, and my number format as well. The number format is obviously placing the decimal point into the right area. Any changes here you make, just make sure you click on the save button in the far right hand side of the screen. The next is our user dealer settings. So if we come into dealer settings here, this is where we can set up our dealership information. So just bear in mind that you need to check this information that it's actually correct. So placing your correct dealer code, your dealer name, things like your VAT number, telephone number, contact number, contact name and email address. This is particularly important here, contact name and email address. Why is that? Well, if you need to contact us or you send a message to our customer support team, this is the contact information that the system will use. So if this is incorrect, if someone's left in the dealership or the, this person is no longer in charge, then please take this name out and replace the email address and uh, enter the right information. Make sure the street, city, postcode name is all correct. This is obviously all dummy information that I've placed in here, but obviously if you make any changes, then just hit save in the bottom right hand corner. There's two tabs, there's dealer details and employees. If you click on employees, this is where you can set up your employees. This is not where you set up who has access to the system. So this is not licensing information. This is who has um, who, who uses the systems to, to quote. So when we're building up a quote for the customer, we may put the service advisor name into the quote. So this is where you would enter this information in. Same with mechanics. If we click on the ad here, we can add in a technician, service advisor, or even a counter person. So again, all that information could be uh, entered in here. Once you've done that, click on save. But just bear in mind, this is not where you set up who has access to super service menus. Okay, back into settings again. So we've done the first two, pretty easy so far. 
Now we get into more of a complicated area of super service. And when I say complex, it just requires your concentration now to run through each one of these tabbed uh, options along the top of the screen. So we're going to start with labor rates first. Now labor rates is what you're charging per hour in your dealership. All of these that I set up here individually, cost, fleet, internal, retail, staff, are ones that are preset in the system in terms of the names. You can change these names if you wish to. So for example, with fleet, if I click on fleet here, I can just simply change the name and put something else in. If I wish to change the name, uh, put in the name of the, uh, the labor rate and then click on OK. If I want to reset it back to its original name, I click on the reset button and I click on OK. The DMS code is, if, uh, is the DMS code for this labor rate. So if you have a DMS integration um, with your uh, DMS, whether it be uh, an ADP system, then perhaps it may need a, a DMS code in there for it to pick up the labor line and your hourly labor price, so what you're charging your customers per hour. So for fleet, I'm charging 44 euros and 64 cents per hour plus VAT. The VAT is then added because we say the labor is taxable, so we put a tick in this box, and we also say that the fluids and sundries are taxable uh, against this labor rate name. So again, we tick both those boxes. The calculation, by the way, is always flat matrix under here is non-applicable for the Irish market, so we don't need to use this. We click on OK, and then we click on Save once we've done anything in here. The most important one for uh, you to set up is Retail. So we click on to Retail. Again, you can change the name, put in the DMS code, but it's important that you put in the correct hourly labor price. Now, you'll need to double check this. Um, back in your dealership. So when you, you're using SSM today, and if you're using it now, just double check that you've got the right hourly labor price. If it's incorrect, it means that when you quote in SSM, um, the price that you're quoting per hour for your labor is incorrect. So make sure that this price here is, is accurate as today's prices in your dealership. The labor rate, again, just make sure it's taxable, that box is ticked, and fluids and sundries, taxable is ticked as well. And we click on OK. Once you do that, you click on save. Please make sure you click on save after any changes within these areas. In each one of these tab views, the, the save button is always there in the bottom right hand corner. So make sure you please uh, hit save. If you don't hit save, it won't save the information. Okay, uh, labor times you don't need to worry about. This is non-applicable for the Irish market. And the next tab would be fluids and sundries. Fluids and sundries here enables you to change or add any of the fluids that you're charging for in your dealership today. So for example, when it comes to oils, and if you um, would say that, well, the oils here that we charge or use in SSM uh, are not the oil names that we charge in the dealership, you can change the name. It's really simple. So for example, an MO13 oil, and we can run a report in SSM to tell you which oils are applicable to which vehicles. But let's just say this MO13 is found on the Rio, uh, Rio uh, vehicle, the, the diesel engines. We can click on the oil, and we can change the name. So for example, the API code, the American Petroleum Institute code is CH4, so that's the grade. But if we wanted to change that to Mobile Oil 5W30, we could change it and click on OK. When we change it, you can see that under the system sundry name, it still retains its old name. The custom sundry code, or sorry, the custom sundry name will be Mobile Oil 530. That means that when we produce the quotation to the customer, you'll actually have the correct oil name on the invoice or on the estimate or on the, um, on the, on the repair order that you're presenting back to the customer. So it'll always have the correct information based on what information you want to appear. If we choose it again, we can also apply an alternate part number. So if you wanted to apply this under a part number rather than its sundry code, you could click on this box here and actually key in a part number that was applicable to this oil. So rather than, again, than the sundry code appearing on the invoice or the estimate or the repair order, we could apply a part number instead. So again, it's just another thing that you can change in the system. We can also add any sundries that you wish to as well. So here at the bottom, we could add in a sundry, and let's just call it screen wash, and the sundry code could be SW. Let's call it screen wash, DMS code zero, and I'm not gonna apply any pricing just yet, because I'll do that on the next 
screen, and then I may want to just apply ScreenWash to every ser service operation in uh, in SSM. So every service operation now would have ScreenWash applied. Now there doesn't have to be a price applied to it. We can do that later, or we can leave it blank. So what that means is that we add sundries, additional sundries onto the job, but without applying a price to the customer. So we just say that we put in screen wash, we've topped your screen wash up, but there's no there's no price for that. So this could be anything, absolutely anything you want. It could be uh, workshop consumables, it could be an environmental levy, it could be any kind of sundry that you would use in your dealership today that you want to appear on the SSM uh, quotation or the estimate or repair order. Okay, once we've done that, again, just make sure you hit save. And that's all done, that's great, that's saved now in the system. And now we can move on to sundry rates. Okay, this is where we're going to need some more concentration from you. This is, gets a little bit more complicated now. Sundry rates is tariffed pricing. Now, if you can imagine, tariff pricing is different prices for different types of customer. So we are, on the left side of the screen, we have our sundry code. We have our sundry name. We have the sundry rate type, which is charged in euros, which is fine. These two columns here, don't worry about those. I'll explain those in a minute. But then we have, next to uh, this first column, fleet, we have all the pricing. So for example, in your dealership today, you could say, well, my fleet customers pay a different price from my retail customer for my oils and sundries. And that could mean that the oil that you charge for fleet is at... 10 pounds, sorry, 10 euros per litre. Your retail customers, on the other hand, would pay 13 euros per litre. So it means that you could charge a tariff price for your different customer sets based on what labour they're paying in the workshop. So here, for example, in uh, retail, my automatic transmission fluid, this particular type of automatic transmission fluid, the AF11, is charged at 5 pounds, oh, sorry, just stop saying pounds, five euros per litre. This one here is at 20 euros per litre. Uh, my brake fluid, I charge at three euros per litre, and so on and so forth. Once you've set this up, and if we say all these columns at the moment are blank and just set to zero, we can say, well, this one's three euros, this one's four euros, this one's five euros. And what the system does, as soon as you start entering information into one cell, it will default to the next line. So three, enter, four, enter, five, enter, five, six, and so on and so forth. For service managers that are on the call today, you may not have access to your pricing. So check with parts, get a price list from the parts department and see what they're charging for these oils. They're charged at a per package price, a per litre price. So make sure whatever you put in here, you're charging them at a per litre price. When you quote an SSM on brake fluid or oil, it will take the oil quantity and times it by the price that you have in here. So, for example, if we move down to uh, our engine oil, and let's just take this one here, the 5W30, if we say this one's four, lit four euros per litre, super service menus will time that, times that price by the amount of litage that's going on, the amount of litres that are going into the vehicle. Okay, um, You can see here that the majority of, the, of these are all done. You can also see that some of these I'm not charging for. So where I have key cutting and I'm charging five euros here for this customer for a fleet and five euros for internal, I'm not actually charging this to, uh, to retail customers. So actually you can turn some of these off if you wish to just by ticking on, clicking on the tick box. What that means there is then when you charge for the sundry in super service and you choose a retail customer, it'll either choose to show the price or ignore the price. So you can hide pricing based on what the customer type might be. And again, if you've got any questions about that, then we can uh, show you how that works. Um, once you've done one column of information, what we've built into super service as well is a copy column uh, uh, option. So for example, once we've done retail, we can click on the copy column here and go from retail and copy the information to fleet. So if you've done one column of information and all your pricing is the same, it doesn't matter whether it's retail customer, fleet customer, internal customer, staff, we all have the same pricing. So it means that we could go from retail pricing and copy that across into fleet and it will change the price. And if we close that, you can see, yes, it has changed the price 
that three three pounds or three euros, sorry, or that four euros has gone across into fleet now. But you can see the others haven't changed. So if I want to copy again, retail, we keep your eye on the uh, transmission fluid, retail into internal, copy, and you can see that now again, yeah, it's changed. It's gone from twenty to four. So again, once we've done anything there, make sure you click on save and it's saved in the system. At the bottom of the screen here, we have oil disposal rate, and that can also be set as a fixed rate or a variable rate. Now, oil disposal is based upon um, your environmental levy. So when you take oil from a vehicle and dispose of it, you either pass the charge on to the customer or you hide the, uh, you hide the price in SSM. It's entirely up to you. In this system, in oil disposal, we can see here that we charge a flat rate to and let's just move across the screen to retail customers of one euro. So we charge one euro for oil disposal at a flat, at, at flat fee. So if we change it to a variable rate, it then means we're charging one euro per litre of oil that we're extracting from the vehicles. So again, it's dependent on how you manage um, your pricing within your dealership. Most dealerships have a flat rate and they would charge oil disposal, say, five euros. So once we change the five euros, hit save, it means then we're charging oil disposal at five euros at a flat rate fee. Okay, um, we'll move on very quickly. I think that one uh, <laughs> is quite complex, so that will take some working out. Obviously, you know, we have a help desk that can manage you and talk you through some of these settings. So um, again, use this time as well if you have any questions to raise your hand and, um, and, and ask us and we'll, we'll try and answer your questions or, as I say, texting your questions to the text box at the bottom. In parts pricing here, you can set up different parts pricing levels. So this one here takes the retail excluding tax price from Kia Island and allows you to create any discount levels. So this one here, I've created a VIP customer, meaning it's a flat discount at minus 8%. So it's going to take 8% off the recommended retail price. Now, for those of you that do um, negotiate a price with the customer uh, or add any discount, when you're at a point of sale and um, talking about a service or repair on the vehicle, there are other features in SSM which allow you to discount individually. So you don't have to have a parts pricing level in here set up specifically for uh, VIP or trade or whatever it might be. You can, um, uh, you can discount individually within super service on an ad hoc basis. But to add a, a trade price level or anything you want, you could say here, for example, I'm going to call it trade gets the level name, uh, the code would be number two. The base price is always retail excluding tax. Yes, it is taxable here, and here I'm going to say minus 5%. Okay. Once I say that, I can see here that I've got my trade prices now at minus 5% off the retail prices. My default price, by the way, the, the one that will always show me first of all for parts pricing is retail excluding tax. Now you can change the default level if you, wish, if you wish to, but you don't have to. You can see that it's taxable and you can see that it's my manufacturer's pricing level. Okay, on to the next tab which is tax. Um, please make sure your tax is set up um, uh, for your market. We, um, you know, we have super service menus across many markets um, worldwide, so we don't set the tax for you. You have to do that yourselves. So just please make sure when you come into tax, your uh, tax your tax percentage is set up correctly. If you will, tax code, tax level name, which would, which would be uh, you know, re retail tax or tax, whatever you want to call it, and tax percentage, and that will add uh, VAT onto your prices. Updoor recommendations, again, I'll, I'll come back to this a little bit later on, but this is, uh, is a pro activity tool which allows you to upsell additional menus to the customer. So let's take a common scenario. A customer comes in, um, they have one to 30,000 mile service, it's a, or 30,000 kilometer service, whatever it might be. It's a major service and you think the brake, the brake fluid may need replacing. Well, instead of surprising the customer with price later on, further down the line when uh, the vehicle's been in the workshop and they've had a health check or whatever it might be, you could actually use super service to say, well, it's a 30,000 kilometer service, so it's a major service, you may need your brake fluid change, so you can have a pop-up in this assessment to tell you what the price was. So you're quoting the price for the service and then additionally price for the brake fluid check. In here, 
I've got different jobs. I've got air conditioning check, brake fluid, tire pressure. Um, I've even got a dealer menu here that I've created myself called replacement tires, and here for one, another one for replacing the fuel filter. So this could be a pop up that you can have in Super Service, allowing you to, to upsell additional menus to the customer, but not just upselling, informing them of additional costs uh, which might be incurred during the service or the repair. So a really great feature, and again, I'll show you that as we move on through today. And then the last one is miscellaneous. So this allows you here to set the currency up correctly. So make sure you're uh, quoting in euros and not anything else. Um, the lifetime CPI is a is an inflation indicator. So when you're quoting lifetime service, you can add an inflation buffer uh, onto the price, and then any price rally as well. So once you've done all of that, again just hit save and we're done. Okay. So what we're going to do is run you back over to, uh, or hand you back over to uh, Laura. She's going to do another poll, ask you some questions, have a bit of a breather from this, and then we'll come back and do more on vehicle selection. Laura, over to you. Thanks very much, James. Um, just to make sure everybody's paying attention, we've got a nice little poll question for you. Uh, can you tell us what settings must be completed to ensure accurate and consistent quoting? Please select all the options that apply. You've got parts pricing, dealer details, labor rates, sundry rates, and print settings. Please place your answers. Okay, just to give those uh, stragglers a chance to submit their answers, I would like to add there are multiple answers for this question, so don't get confused. Okay, just to uh, show you guys the answers that you've put through. So uh, a lot of you were pretty spot on. Parts pricing, labor rates, and sundry rates are what you need to add in. So well done, and uh, keep listening. So back to you, James. Thank you, Laura. Excellent. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Laura. Okay, so what we're going to do is run you through the next part of um, today's training, which is selection and running more through the operation uh, selection and operation details. Laura made the point there of ensuring um, accurate and consistent quoting, uh, and that is absolutely important in super service menus. When when you are quoting in super service menus, it's, it's, it's important that you've set up the price settings correctly. So what I've just run you through there in terms of setting up the labor, setting up the sundry cost, parts pricing, packs, they are absolutely critical for you to use super service. And without it, really you're not quoting the right pricing. So again, at the end of today's session, please um, look at what you've got set up there at the moment and spend some time with it, setting it up correctly. As I said, it is one time entry only, but once you've done it, it will give you uh, lots and lots of information and uh, gave you the, give you the ability uh, to quote absolutely accurately uh, uh, when a customer wants a service or repair. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next part, which is vehicle selection. So you will know that we can search by uh, a license plate. We can put in a local license plate, uh, an Irish number plate. Here I've got a UK one, but also we can put in a VIN number as well. So we can search by a VIN number if we wish to do. We can search by license plate. Uh, and this, again, just brings up information about the car. If I want to see more information about this particular vehicle, there is a vehicle detail button here on the far right-hand side. So you can see here uh, the model year model code, the description, the date ranges, etc. So there's more information about the car if you need to. You can also print it off there as a print button. If you don't know what the vehicle information is, uh, and if we reset here, let me reset from the beginning again, um, you can choose from either the uh, pictures of the car, so you've got the graphic index view here, or you can choose by the model listing here uh, in, in the, in the drop-down list. So this is just another way of finding um, finding menus uh, against one of these vehicles. So for example, if we said this was the Pro C that we were looking for, 
and we didn't know the license plate or VIN number. We could then, by using um, the derivative of that car, so if we said it was the 1.4 uh, double hybrid cam TCI, super service menus then will match the correct service menu and repair um, operations for this particular vehicle. But please bear in mind, if you're not using the VIN or license plate number, you may get more choices on the interpretation when it comes to choosing a repair. So it's absolutely important that you use the VIN or license plate number um, when you're uh, when you're quoting. Okay, um, I'm going to take you through the operation details now and uh, and take you through um, more about using the drop down lists and using the operation codes and the warranty codes. So if, let's just reset this information again and then let's go to the license plate number that I'm using here, the Rio. And in this instance, um, as I showed you, if we were looking for a service, we could click on service here. Yeah, this is all good. And the maintenance service, we can see all the applicable maintenance services available. You can actually see the information in, in super service is vast because we go from the 15,000 kilometer service right through to the 210,000 kilometer service, so 168 months. So a lot of information there. If we choose this, say the 60, the Say the 60, and you can see here that brings up the 60,000 mile service for me, all good. However, a quicker way of even finding that is if we reset this information again, just go up one level, and we put in something like S60 and hit search. The system, within one click there, and in say one second, can find me the job even faster. And the reason for that is every service menu and every repair menu in super service menus has a code. And we code it very simply. It's not a secret code. It's not something that you know you have to memorize. It's very easy. So what I did there was put in S for service, 60 for the kilometer, 60,000, and it brings up the job information. So here I can quote 392 euros and 37 cents. So again, it's very quick, very accurate, very fast. Now using some of the settings in the service that we've done already, we can change things like the labor. So let's just say that the customers presented themselves as a VIP customer. So VIP customer, you will be then charged for your labor at 242 euros. That means the price would be 452. For parts pricing, we said, well, okay, well, it will give you some discount, we'll give you trade pricing that will then give you the trade price discount in super service. So very quickly, again, accurately, we can change these settings to whatever we want based on whatever the customer type is, and that's running from the back end of what you put into your super service menu. So again, really important. When you've got it set up, it works beautifully. Okay, when we're searching for things like parts or even um, other jobs, we can use the search box here at the top. So for where it says um, operation selection, if I was non-technical and I was looking for something like the water pump or water-related job, you can see here, again, super service menus knows that this job here is the one that I'm probably looking for. So when I type in the word water, it finds the water pump. So again, just another quick and accurate way of finding a repair job. So if the cars come in to the workshop, yeah, unfortunately the water pump he's doing but it's 446 euros. We put in the word water and it can find the job. We can also do abbreviation words. So if I put in ALT, it also find things like replacing the alternator and or supply and fit a changeover alternator. So again there's other th other words in there that you can put where it will give you uh, more choices. If I put in the word rad, again it knows that I'm looking for radiator jobs, so again it gives me five choices based on my VIN number under the word rad. So again another way to find your jobs um, really accurately. If we click on uh, repair and replace jobs in the beginning you can see it breaks down all the jobs for me as well. So if it was break job that I was looking for, you can see all the break jobs that are listed and in fact 11 jobs applicable against my VIN number. So again, the, the, the images are there for you to use. If you want to look at the images and you want to go on the body and look at all the jobs for body, we can see body. If it's break discs and pads, you can see there are 10 different jobs. So if it was to replace the front discs, let's have a look. Yeah, you can see that these are the jobs that would be applicable to my break discs. We also have in each repair job the LTS code. Now, for those of you that do warranty in the dealership, or those of you that need to see uh, warranty information out of super service menus, you can key in 
this uh, warranty code at the top of the screen here. So the 58117R0B, um, you can search on within the system. So if I just reset all this again and enter that code in, you can see Super Service finds the jobs applicable under that warranty code. So for warranty clerks that are on the call today or people that do the warranty in put into GWMS, then please, you know, you can use Super Service again to find the warranty jobs that are applicable in Super Service menus. Now, not every single warranty job is in Super Service menus. Obviously, we have common repairs that are placed in the in system, so you're not going to find every flat rate time in Super Service, but we have the most popular common repairs that you would find uh, in the system for in, in a workshop today. Okay. Um, then we're going to move just a little bit more on to um, printing and showing you more about uh, uh, quoting. And then uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Laura just to run you through another poll question. Okay, so I've shown you how to um, choose the operation and look at all the information applicable. Again, just make sure you use the plus and minus boxes at the side here so you can minimize this information. What we're going to show you next once you come back uh, from Laura is appending to the quote. But one of the great things you can do with super service menus, if I just reset this information, is you can, uh, as I was saying, you can upsell to a customer, but you can also print this information out. So let's just say it's this particular job here, it's a 45,000 kilometer service. There's a print option here where I was playing around with the labor and parts pricing. We click on print, that we have then a different print option. So we can print as an RO or we can print as an estimate. Estimate is really important because if a customer's come in and they're shopping for a price, you want to give them a print out of an estimate because those prices may change within a couple of days or in a couple of weeks. So it's important that the, the, the wording on the printout says estimate. The other thing is if you're doing actually physically doing this job in the workshop, you might want to print out a repair order. The repair order then can be attached to the job card and then the customer comes back and pays for the, pays for the work, you can show them the, um, the order of the, repair, the, of the operation. So let's just um, click on repair order and let's click on print. And as you can see here, it gives a very comprehensive view of the repair order. So we carry out a 45,000 kilometer service and it changes all the operation details into a tick box. So Giving that to the customer means that look, we've done all these checks on your car as well as replace these parts and use these fluids, etc. And this is the price that you've paid. So they know they're getting a very professional service and the car is in, is in good hands and is being checked professionally by uh, one of your technicians. If we're doing a, an estimate, click on print. You can see that the layout changes completely. So no more tick boxes. But the key thing is that if we're handing this to a customer, we could say that, look, this is an estimate, but bear in mind that the cost that you pay here, and it gives you a nice breakdown of the cost, 280 euro, that price could change. And don't forget, there is a level of negotiation that you might do with the customer, which also you can build into super service menus. Not in this screen, but I can show you in the next screen. There's also options here on the uh, print options where you can um, display a discount line, you can print the repair time, you can hide invoice lines, um, and you can also change things like the print language and who the service advisor is. You can put in any custom authorization there, customer consent, print your dealer footnote out, disclaimers, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, right, over to Laura for another poll question. Number yeah, poll number three, and then we are going to run over to the quoting and RO system, where really then we can start playing around with the quote a little bit more, and then hopefully take any of your questions. So Laura, over to you. Thanks very much, James. So just to make sure you're all still there, the next poll of today, um, as James has just told us, you can answer this question: What is the super service menus code for a sixty thousand kilometre? the service. Is it S600, S60,000 or S60? Please cast your votes. Okay, well I have to say that is some um, good listening on your part. Well done. Most people got it spot on. 
So uh, back to you, James. Okay, thanks, Laura. Yeah, we also had a, a raised hand there from Charlie. Brian, um, I'll unmute you, Charlie, um, and see if we can reach you. Charlie, you there? Hello. Okay, we can't hear you, Charlie, but um, perhaps if you can text your question in to uh, Laura, we'll, um, we'll try and answer your, your question, whatever it is uh, you need us to, to answer. There was also another question there from someone else about changing the currency symbol from dollar into euro, and again, that's, that's a really good point, and some of you may be seeing that appear in your version of SSM, so let me just show you that very quickly. So if you go into settings and into your price settings, and in, under miscellaneous, you'll see currency. So if your pricing is set to dollars or something other other than dollars and not euros, just make sure you, you browse through the list of uh, currency symbols, and then you can see here you've got a euro symbol. So the euro symbol is the decimal point in the right place. Now it's entirely up to you whether you want the euro symbol first or you want the euro symbol last. So it's entirely up to you how you might um, want that displayed in super service menus. Mine is displayed at the beginning with the decimal point in the correct area. Hit save and that means now that all my pricing or the currency format is in euros with the currency symbol in, in the correct format and place. Okay, so next stage is just moving you over to the quote and RO system. There's a lot you can do in this uh, part of super service menus. And actually what I should have pointed out was when you're browsing through or going through the sections in super service menus, um, each major feature is listed at the top of the screen. So for example, if you're not sure where you are and you want to jump to looking up a VIN again and you read this view, in the top left hand side of the screen you can see vehicle selection. You click on vehicle selection, it takes you back. If you want to go back and look at the last job you were in, go to operation selection. And again, that will either take you back to the old job or even take you back to the menu view here where you can see the repair and the service jobs. If we want to choose our service again, you know, we can say a 60 example. Let's just make life easier for ourselves. And we choose our job, we can see here. Um, we then want to move on to the quote and RO system. Before we do that, actually, one of the things that I did, did uh, point out at the beginning was the upsell recommendations and productivity tools that are in super service menus today. One of the things you can have is a pop-up, or you can have it just as a recommendation that you click on. To activate the pop-up, all you do is you go into settings and you switch it on. Again, I'll show you that um, further on uh, today. I'll come back to that, that feature. But mine's switched off. So to see the pop-up, all I do is click on recommendations here and super service menus will bring me that pop-up. Now you remember I was saying that on, on a particular service or repair jobs there might be an operation associated to this. So let's just say the 60,000 kilometer service, the customers come in, we've quoted the price, yeah, very happy with that, no problem, but there may be brake fluid change with that as well. So to make sure there's no hidden cost with the, with the price and we do need to do the brake fluid check or change, the, the customer's aware, we can have this as a pop-up. So at the moment we've quoted 392, but actually if we add the replaced brake fluid, it's another 160 euros, bringing your total to 553 euros and 30 cents. So these upsell features can be jobs that you want to add on, uh, a point of sale, or they could be uh, jobs that you want to upsell to the customer. We call it our McDonald's feature. <laughs> so basically McDonald's and they try and upsell to you, or as most businesses try to today, when you're trying to buy something, they might try and upsell to you. This is exactly the same type of theory. If you want to um, gain uh, more revenue, and you want to sell more hours, and you want to um, sell more jobs, this is a great way to do it, and Super Service Menus allows you to do it through this uh, recommendations button. If you want to add these two jobs now onto the repair order, we can say into quote, but in this case, we're going to leave it across, so we can turn these crosses into ticks to add them or back to crosses, uh, which means they won't be added. The next thing we're going to do is say append to quotes. So click on append to quotes. This then takes me into the final step, so the quoting an RO. And again, what we've done here at the top of the screen, if you just see my mouse, we've gone from operation details into the quoting an RO system. RO is repair order, so the quoting and repair order system. In here, we can then start um, 
uh, discounting pricing, we can start adding more jobs, and we can quote more and more. So at the moment, it's 392 euros, but hang on a minute, we've identified there's another repair needs doing to the car. So we then jump back to operation selection at the top of the screen, going to repair, replace. Let's just say it's something to do with uh, the air conditioning. We need to um, evacuate and recharge the air conditioning system. Now, the idea here is that we first uh, quote for that job. So to, to quote for that job, it's going to be 166 euros on top of what you're paying today. If the customer agrees to that, you can say a pen to quote. And what super service menus will do very, very cleverly is identify that any duplications of sundries in your existing uh, quotation. So we can see here, this picks out three. There's duplications of oil disposal, shop supplies, and, um, and, and tires as well. This is again tires, this is one that I added myself. Now if we don't want to duplicate those lines, we leave these crosses as they are, so we're not going to charge for them twice. If we want to add something again, we just put a tick in the box. If we're happy as it, as it is, we click on OK, and then we can see now the total price is 435 euros. The great thing with super service is that if the customer then challenges you on the price individually for each line item, the quote total screen at the top here, you can see how much the individual cost will be. The labor is 175 euros. And I say to you, well, how much are parts? 61 euros. Um, how much are foods and sundries? 124 euros. Now, if the customer says, well, it seems quite a lot of money, then you can start building in um, some, some discounts or some uh, making it cheaper for the customer if you wish. So if I, for example, say, well, look, I'm happy to give you a discount on everything, there's a discount button here. If we click on the discount button at the top of the, top of the screen, we can discount in two, two areas. We can discount on price or discount. So or percentage, sorry. So if I say, well, look, I'm happy to give you a 25% discount on every single line item, that has the price. So 25% enter and you can see here now that your discount is 90 euros. Pretty good. If for example you think well actually that's maybe going a bit too far, you can click on discount again and we can reset. But before I do that, let me show you. So if I minimize these lines again by hitting in the plus here again, this minimizes everything. You can see here that my labor line's got 25%. Let's look at parts. Yep, 25%, 25%. So I'm taking 25% off everything. If I want to discount uh, or want to reset again, go back into discount, hit the reset button, and it resets everything. In this, in this scenario now, I might say, well, look, I'm going to give you some money off the pollen filter. So by clicking on the pollen filter, you could actually add in here a 25% or 25% yeah, discount, click on update, you can see that there are 25% discounts added just to that pollen filter. So what's in terms of discount? Well, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, that's €5.63 I'll give you in terms of discount. Okay? So you can come in here, add as many things as you want, and change as many things as you want. It's, it's a really neat system for that. If you want to insert any more lines of information, there's an insert button here, and we can insert more information. So if we want to insert another part number, a sundry code, an image, Voice line, even a symptom. So the customer said there's an issue with the front front knocking on my car. Please look at it. If it's a sublet, say for example, the customer's damaged their alloy wheels. Uh, it's not a service that's done by the dealership. You know, it's a, a, a company that will come in and do it at the dealership. You might charge a sublet price. So if, for example, we said sublet insert, let's call it a smart repair. We might say quantity one and the price is 150 euro to um, fix that dent by our, by our contractor. Let's insert that information in, and then that will be inserted into super service menus. So, just bear with me. So once the information is inserted in, it then goes into the repair order, and it's, uh, it's all neat, and you can see the cost. If uh, we wanted to insert any more lines of information in, we could do that as well. So we could insert um, uh, smart repairs, uh, alloy wheel repairs, any, anything that might be done off-site by the dealership. Okay, um, one of the other things you can add in is ad hoc jobs as well. 
So ad hoc jobs could be jobs that are done specifically for this repair order. So let's take an example. The customer's come in and says, yeah, um, rear seats have got uh, dirt, mud, whatever it might be. Uh, can you clean the car? Can you give it a full valet? It needs a really good, really good wash. So that could be an, an ad hoc job by the dealership, or it could be just a repair that's not actually in super service menus. So by doing that, you can add an insert line and add in a job. So just bear with me, I'm just going to uh, check, log into my super service again. Seems to have a gremlin in my uh, system today. It's my new laptop that IT have given me. I always buy my tea <laughs> for these things. And let me just run you through that again. So I run through the, uh, the license plate. Let's just use an S60. Let's make this real quick. So we're not wasting any time. And let's go back into the append to quote. Yep, all good. And let's go back into insert line and let's do a job. So as I say, a job could be uh, an ad hoc job specifically for this customer. Let's just do a car clean. And instead of charging a flat fee, we're going to charge it based on time. So it's going to take 0.5 to do that car clean because the car's quite dirty. <coughs> we're going to choose an hourly uh, retail labor price. Insert. And as you can see, people go down to the bottom, car clean 0.5, and what I charge per hour means it's 42 euros 35. So it could be anything you want at all. Again, it's an ad hoc job. So there's lots that you can do in the repair order. Once the repair order is ready, <coughs> we can see that we can put in a customer name if we want. <coughs> Excuse me. We can put in the reg number, which is there already, the VIN number, the mileage of the car. So let's just make this more. Uh, realistic by saying that it's done 61,000 kilometers. Customer name is Ryan. It's job 20. Now, what we're going to say to the customer is, look, if you come back to me in 20 days, I'll honor the price, or the price is, you know, it's an estimate. So we'll try and keep to that 434 euros. However, in 20 days, we put in 20 days, the quote will expire. So on the 17th of the 3rd, the quote's going to expire. So that means that the quote won't be deleted from super service, it will just mean that it's expired and we'll have to relook at it again in terms of what the cost might be. The service advisor is James. Uh, the job status might be as a quotation or appointment or even an open repair order, whatever it might be, and even a technician name. You put in a technician name here and let's just call the technician that might be assigned to this job is Rob. We can see the number of hours that we're selling the customer. So Two and a half hours, it was being sold here, pretty good. Um, let's just uh, check the order once more so we can see, yep, that's all good. And then we can also take an email address of the customer. So to take an email address or further information, we can click on the I symbol here. And now if you have DMS integration, obviously with a two-way connection, you can extract this information and place it into your super service. But if we said the customer's email address was this, super service, to captures the email address, so we don't have to keep asking the customer for it. We close it. We then say to the customer, well, look, it's still an estimate. Do you wish to uh, come back in 20 days and think about it? Yeah, or the customer might indicate that. We save it. Click on OK. And then once we've saved it, we say no to updating the quotes. Um, there's an email button on the far right-hand side of the screen. Click on email, and as you can see here, the to email is the customer's email address. So we can put in the subject, your quote, the message, and then where it says print as quote, well, if the customer was printing it, we want them to print it as an estimate. So make sure that's set to estimate as well, because we want them to send as an estimate and also for them to print as an estimate. Once we do that, we say send, and that's been successfully sent to the customer. You can also CC someone in, in, in there as well if you wish to. You can CC a manager or CC um, someone else within the dealership. If we close this now and we want to retrieve it, we come back into lifetime service. Oh, sorry, that's my next thing. <laughs> we come into quoting an RO. Okay, we can see we've got a blank RO. We go into load. We put in the customer's name. And this says in two weeks now the customer's come back. Um, and a different person in the dealership is serving Ryan. Click on search. You can see here, yeah, Ryan, you're the Rio 5 door. Yep, yeah, that's me. Um, let's see what it is that you had. Right, we don't want to update the prices. Uh, you're quoted 434 euros for that 60,000 kilometer service. Yep, yeah, that's right. And let me check what else you quoted for. Oh, a car clean as well. 
yeah, that's right. So again, very professional. Um, you know, you're taking down all the customers' concerns, and it's all there, clear on the screen. Two weeks after the event was taken place by the original service advisor. So again, super service menus is a great way to centrally store your quotes or estimates. Okay, uh, enough of me talking. Now I'm going to just pass you back over to Laura uh, for poll, uh, the next poll, and um, then we'll move on to lifetime service, a couple of other points, and then we'll finish off. Laura. Thanks, James. Um, just to select another poll, and make sure you're all still paying good attention. Um, what information can be printed? Is it repair order, an invoice, vehicle information, or a quote? Please cast your votes. Thank you very much. And uh, to give you an idea, there were multiple answers on this question, so we are playing with you a little bit here. So you can actually print all of those. So we'll let that one slide. So uh, back to you, James. Thanks, Laura. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. I see some really great results coming in. I'll just check some of those questions coming across from, from yours. So keep the questions coming because um, you know, really interested to see what your views and opinions are. Obviously, there's some questions about pricing which is great to see. Yes, pricing is the same. We, we've, um, we've now got a, uh, an automated system in place, meaning that pricing in microcap is the same in super service menus. So yeah, um, keep the questions coming. We can unmute you. If you want to be unmuted and talk amongst the rest of the, uh, the group here today, uh, please feel free to do so. But if not, keep sending me those uh, questions. Okay, I won't uh, bore you for too much longer. Uh, there's a couple other things just to uh, show you and then uh, move on to the final part in terms of showing you with some of the resource features and getting help in super service. So the next feature to show you is a lifetime service. So what is lifetime service? Well, if you take a scenario where customers come in, they've had the service or the repair carried out and they're due their next service in 12 months from now. The customer might say to you, well, look, can you just give me a rough idea of price? How much is it going to be? Now, in the current current ways you might be doing it is checking books, um, checking DMS, uh, running around to the parts people, getting an idea of how much parts might be, even um, checking um, GWMS for some of the uh, time information. You don't have to do that in super service menu because it puts all the information into one place for you. So it cuts out a lot of that um, fact finding, going to find information and places it all in super service giving you a, an accurate or, or projected cost within a few clicks. So let's take this scenario. So this Rio here, five door, Ryan's had his uh, first year service, very happy with it, um, but wants an idea of how much the service is going to be over the next, say, three years. Ryan's going to keep the car for another three years, just wants a projected cost, maybe even an idea how much repairs might be. So in lifetime service, we click on this uh, option here, it will categorize all the services for this specific vehicle. So again, we're using, we're using the VIN number or the license plate number, and Super Service Menus is able to correctly identify those correct service intervals for the car. So we've had the fitting. Uh, the customer says, well, yeah, I'm going to keep the car for three years, so I'm going to see you up until you say your 60,000 kilometer service or the 48 month. So ticking on these boxes here, click, 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 three clicks, I then can get a grand total price in the bottom right hand corner, 1,022 euros. Now, the customer might say, well, that seems quite a lot of money. Well, let me then break that cost down for you. So in service costs, click on service costs here, we they can then see the lifetime distance that the customer is going to keep the car. So 60,000 kilometers, what does that mean? Well, it's 1,022 euros and 91 cents. The term of that service plan, if you wanted to make a plan, is 48 months. But this is, the, this is the great part. The projected monthly cost is only 21 euros. It's 21 euros and 31 cents, and the projected cost per kilometer is 2 cents. So just by those simple three clicks and clicking on service costs, you can see the breakdown of how much um, the lifetime 
of this vehicle will be to the customer. Again, very easy, very quick, very accurate. And because Super Service Menus is a web-based system, you know these prices are as accurate as we get them. Also, it's important, as I say, to make sure that your price um, the price settings are accurate, so it will give then a correct projected cost to the customer. If you wanted to build a service plan, you could also do that from this system. You could print this information out, give them a quote, and then obviously make your service plans through your DMS or through whoever offers you a service plan system. But this gives you more technical and more in-depth information um, than perhaps you would get from a DMS or from a service plan provider. Okay, we can insert that information into the service plan here. We can then say, well, look, we're likely to see you for some other things during this three-year period. So let's go into uh, an ad operation, and let's go into breaks, and let's just say, well, we're likely to see if your brake fluid change. Um, we're only going to see you once, and we're going to do it on your next service, which is likely to be a 30 and we can insert that information. And you can do any type of repair in here. And you, as you can see, there's no parts, but you can see the breakdown of the cost um, when it adds it into the columns. The RBF is a replace brake fluid. And if we look down that list, we can sell the customer. We can sell Ryan. OK, that's going to cost you €160. Euro. So what does that mean in terms of the service plan? Well, it's €1,183.84. But again, if we go back into the service costs, we can see here that the projected monthly cost is slightly more, so it's 24 euros and 66 cents. Again, it's updated, it's all relevant information to what the customer is asking. There's also the CPI uh, indicator here. Now, CPI is a financial term, it's consumer price index, and it's normally based at whatever the banks um, base them at. I think in the UK it's around 3%. In Ireland, you just have to just double check that. But CPI will allow you then to build in an inflation buffer on top of the grand total price. So by clicking on CPI, I can see that I've added to 5%. And how do I know that? Well, CPI would appear here in the far left-hand column. So it's at 5%. So 5% has been applied to that price. If you want to change the CPI value, come into settings, come into price settings, and into miscellaneous, and you can see here lifetime service CPI. So you can change that to whatever percentage is applicable to to your market. Again, you can change it the the labour and parts levels as well. So if the customer says, "Well, actually, I'm a VIP customer," we can change it quite quickly. So we can say, "Okay, VIP, no problem. Let's see what it has cost you. Well, it's one thousand three hundred and seventy euros." And the service cost then will change based on whatever um, whatever that is. So VIP actually, you're paying slightly more. <laughs> Good VIP. Okay, and if we wanted to append that to the quote, we could say append to quote. Uh, do you wish to append all the lines, uh, all the inspection lines? We'll just say no, and then we can append those individual services to the quote and RO system. So we've gone from lifetime service to the quote and RO system. So again, just, just a great feature for you to use. You know, if you know you've been in that situation where a customer says to you, can you just give me a rough idea how much my next three services, four services are going to be, super service menus is the tool for you to use in that type of scenario. Absolutely, it's, it's brilliant for that. Okay, um, just to uh, recap on some of those points then, I've shown you lifetime services, created the quote, applying CPI, applying the lifetime service uh, quote or the, the, the quote over the period of time and months and breakdown, um, displaying the service cost. Um, you can also print as well from here. So if we go back into the lifetime service, click on print, we can print normal view and expanded view or with operations. So again, if the customer says to you, well, look, give me, give me that as a printout, as a, say, an estimate, we can put in the customer signature, put in the service cost, click on print, <clears throat> and again, just, just gives you then a PDF view of how that would look. So the customer can walk out the door thinking, okay, I've got an idea of how much that will be. But it looks like a very professional quote um, done very well uh, you know, when, they, when, when, when you give them that in the dealership. <clears throat> okay, on to just a couple other things. Well, what we use super service menus for? Well, you could use it for managing your customer database, you could use it for your job management, you could use it to create dealer menus and view operations and view reports. I won't run through everything today because we're overrunning on time anyway, but if you come into tools here, for example, 
there's lots of other options. There's a job management, there's a customer management, there's a dealer menus. Dealer menus is another session, I'm, I'm afraid to say. We'll have, have to cover that uh, another time. We'll have to talk to, uh, to Kieran about perhaps doing some more sessions if you want them. And uh, I'm running through things like uh, customizing your menu and reports. In the reports section, actually, if you come into reports and operation codes, if you, you'll see all the operation codes listed in super service and you can actually filter them by operation code with the bin we've got loaded in. So if we click on this box here, you can see all the applicable codes that are, uh, are available for this vehicle. So where I searched on S60, these are where the codes will be found. Repair codes are the same. If you want to know what the uh, bleed brake system is, it's an R RBFB and you can search for that in super service menus. Um, we have uh, accessory codes if they're, if they're applicable to um, to Kia, if you have some accessories in here, I'm not sure you do. You have uh, opera of warranty code, so again, warranty clerks that are on the call today, you can use this for warranty. And then your sundries. So like I was saying before, if you need to know what oils are applicable to which vehicles, you can see the oils here. So on the seed, we, on the A2 model, we, we add these oils here, so the MO29, the MO54. So use this, you can print this information out, you can use it in your dealership when you're assessing all your oils. If you're not sure, again, please contact us and we'll, we'll help you through that, we'll guide you through it. And then last but not least is contacting the help desk. Now, for some of you that uh, you know, are used to using super service menus today or already had some experience with it, if you do spot any errors, mistakes, or things that you think, well, I'm not, not correct, that needs changing uh, in a particular menu, let's just choose a uh, service menu, 45,000 kilometer. And you said, for example, well, the part numbers here are not, are not correct, or one of the part numbers is incorrect. If you come into help, at the top right-hand side, the view screen, and submit feedback, super service will bookmark where you are in the system, remember the VIN number, the license plate, the model, and the operation that you've clicked on. So it could be incorrect part number. Now, please put in your comments, then put in your recommendations. So there's two boxes, comments, recommendations, okay? Just going back to the top left hand side of the screen here, you see contact information, you see my name and my email address. Well that means that it's taking that contact information from my dealer details. So again, that's why I was saying to you at the beginning, make sure your dealer details are correct so that we can then recontact you and uh, speak to you about any query that you're sending through the system. So please, please use you know, this submit feedback. It's not just for telling us about errors or mistakes in the menu data, it's about anything in super service. It could be, I think the system's brilliant, uh, I'd really like to see this feature, or I just think the system's brilliant, and uh, please tell me more about this feature, please call me, I need some help. So uh, again, just um, use this as much as you can to contact us. When you fill out the information, there's an email button here. So by clicking on email, it sends it directly to our help there, so it does it all for you. You know, fills in as much information as it can with your comments, your recommendations, and details at the top here. Click on email, and uh, we'll get in touch with you. Any um, any any submit feedback that's sent to our help desk within 24 hours, you will receive a response from our help desk, and that will give you a call ID or reference ID number for the uh, issue that you've logged with us. So you can always use that reference ID if you wish to get in touch with us. Uh, there's also things like getting started guides, setting guides, FAQs, help files, about all that kind of good stuff. The, um, the getting started guides and the setting guides are PDFs, so you can download those at any time when you want at your leisure, have a look through them. Um, if you're finding something very specific, you can generally find them in the settings guide or the, or the getting started guide. There's also a help file in there, so it's an online help file which again will find you anything uh, that you're looking for in super service. If you're not sure, then again just get in contact with us and we will help. Okay, that is a wrap as they say, that's enough for today's training. We've over around by 10 minutes, so apologies for I hope um, it didn't go on too long for any of you, you haven't, haven't dropped off. Um, if you've got any questions then now's a great time to, um, to ask them. Uh, we can unmute you, so if you want to be unmuted please we can do that. If you want to send us a question, then send us a question. At today's, the end of today's session, again, if you do want to get in contact with us, then please do, please do that via the help desk. Okay, Laura, I think that's enough of me talking, and over to you. Thanks, James. 
Um, just to recap on what James was saying there, um, our support resources that are available to you all include the, the guides, so getting started guides. We also have see and learn movies that you can watch. Obviously, we record our webinars so you can then look back of if there are a certain things that you want to look at. Again, you can obviously go through them. We do record all our webinars. Um, our contact information uh, is included in our products. So our, our email address is service at ifmeurope.com and you should see um, our phone numbers on there as well, or depending what country you're in. Um, I just want to uh, thank you all for, on behalf of James and myself for your attendance today. Um, we would be extremely grateful if you would take a minute to answer this short survey, as you can see it is very short, um, that will automatically open on your browser when the webinar closes. So any feedback we would really, really appreciate. Um, if you've got any questions or anything at all, please just do let us know. So um, thank you very much. Sorry, before we finish, we've just got a question from Mark Walker. So, Mark, I'm going to unmute you, see if we can uh, see if we can hear you. Mark, Mark, are you there? Hi, I'm James. How are you doing, Laura? How are I'm you? not bad. How are you? Hi. Good. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Firstly, just thank you very much for that. That was very informative, and um, obviously plenty in it for us to to get our heads around, get going with. And um, just one question, just to clarify, how to review that session? So, how to view it again? In terms of the uh, what I've just what I've just done, Mark, the recording. Absolutely, yes, absolutely, the recording. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we should be able to sort that out for you, no problem. We'll have to edit it and just uh, trim it up a little bit, but we should be able to provide you with a link where you can uh, play that recording again. Yeah. Brilliant. I'd be keen to distribute that to the network again, just to yeah, just to allay any any queries people may have. And you know, there's really so much that we've touched upon, but didn't go into a lot a lot of depth. So happy to do more sessions like these. If um, the dealers that have attended today feel it's worth doing, then you know we can we can put on uh, another one for you if you want, and we can cover different things as well. Brilliant. That's fantastic. I much appreciated. No problem. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, guys. Bye now. You. Okay, I think that uh, pretty much covers it. If anyone has any other questions? Now's the time to uh, raise your hands. Uh, there was one person that did, and we couldn't unmute you, so sorry for that. Uh, Richard, we've got a question from you, so I'm going to unmute you. Richard, you're, you're live on air. How are you? Oh, not bad. How are you? God, this is probably more more aimed towards Mark. I'm just wondering, is there any chance that we could have a second session like this for um, we would like one of our service employees to look at the same session to go through this training that we just done today? Yeah, let me unmute Mark for you as well. Uh, just bear with me. So many people on the call today. Mark, you're on. You're live on air now as well. Richie, how's it going? Um, yeah, I'd be keen to, as I, just what I asked James there uh, earlier on, in respect of getting a link to this session, um, and I'd like to distribute it to everyone. So if you'd like to have additional members of staff listen and look at it, um, yeah, we can yeah. make it available by all means. Okay. Thanks, cool. Mark. Cheers, Richie. Okay. Cheers. Okay, thanks for that, guys. Um, does, Mark, I'll leave you on mute because there might be some other questions from dealers here that you might want to interact on. Guys, is, is there any other questions? We've got Mark unmuted, so feel free to uh, raise your hand, ask a question at this stage. We've got a lot of people on the call today, so uh, it's, it's a worthwhile opportunity for you to raise your hand before we, before we switch off. We do seem to have a few people asking for the links to the webinar um, recordings and to have refresher courses. Okay, no worries. Well, I think that that's that's it. So I'll put you back on mute again, Mark, and we'll uh, we'll close the session. Thanks, James. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, We'll finish off now, and uh, again, just please, uh, if you could fill out a questionnaire at the end of today's session, we'd be uh, really appreciative of that. Um, but we'll finish up and close.